Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. My name is Debbie and for those of you who are new to the channel, I am the operator owner of Sunny Crest Nursery, a certified horticulturist, and I am here to talk to you about the latest trends for 2023 in gardening. Um, I'll also kind of leave a brief list as to what those of us can do here in the Northwest in the month of January. And I started making the list, and believe it or not, it was a pretty good sized list. I didn't think there would be that much to do, but there's lots of things we can do here. So, first of all, I thought I would uh, bring you up to speed. I haven't been in touch with you folks for months, <laughs> it feels like, uh, due to health issues, time constraints, uh, things got crazy here at the nursery, and uh, but I'm back. <laughs> And I am hoping I can stick with it now this year. I'm doing much better and uh, things of course are, have calmed down immensely here at the nursery. That's about to change here real quick uh, in the next four to five weeks. So for those of you who are wondering what the heck it is we do here in the nursery during the month of January, well, we start preparing for spring big time. Um, just thought I would show you somebody here. This is Mackie. She's our new tabby. She adopted us a couple weeks before Christmas time. She's out here following me as I walk the parameter here at the nursery. And a uh, beautiful cat. And uh, it's kind of cool to have a nursery cat. Someone who will keep the mice in check. So she's more than welcome to stay with us and uh, what I didn't mention is that we've been closed for the last 10 days. That's usually what we do right after Christmas. Um, for the first 10 days in January, we shut down after we've packed away all the Christmas and gotten over that and give ourselves a needed break because it's the last one we're going to get for a while. Uh, once we come back, which is usually around the 11th of January, that'll be this coming Wednesday, depending on when this video comes out. Um, and immediately the trucks start showing up at the back gate. <laughs> we start getting all our hard goods. Those are the first things to start coming in. Uh, all of our pottery, both indoor and outdoor, start showing up. Um, just regular pots, uh, seed, soil, um, and of course plants. I always look forward to that first shipment of plants. Um, and this very first one will be with primroses, pansies, saxifrage, um, ranunculus, you know, all those things that come out in the very, very late winter, early spring. And it's just a sure sign that we're getting so close. <laughs> we're getting so close. We suffered such crappy weather during the year of 2022, another challenge that we've had to deal with here in the Northwest. One of the coldest springs on record. Um, we didn't have our first 70 degree day until June. And as most of you know, here in the nursery business, we depend greatly on Mother's Day. And despite the weather and how cold it was, we had a decent Mother's Day. But I think it could have been even better had we had some decent weather. You know, at least sunshine at 60 degrees would have been nice. But it was still getting down to freezing. Um, the staff was getting tired of putting frost covers on, taking them off. Um, yeah, so the really cold, long cold spring was a huge challenge for us last year. And then we get into the summer, and from June to September, no rain. It was probably the driest, warmest summers we've ever had. In fact, I think they said that at SeaTac in Seattle, that it was the driest, uh, warmest summer on record. 0 0.05 inches of rain. Uh, that's not a whole lot. <laughs> that practically evaporates before it even hits the ground. So, needless to say, we spent our entire summer watering. Then, to end the year, during the month of December, we must have had every kind of weather known to man. Uh, rain, sleet, hail, snow, wind storms, a couple of really good wind storms, and then to end it all, an epic ice storm, which personally I have never lived through before, so that was different. Um, but all the plants came through. Uh, I immediately came outside a day or two later here at the nursery. I walked my own yard and everything did okay. Um, come to find out, the ice can actually help protect your plants, uh, especially if a really cold wind it's those cold, dry winds and day after day of below freezing temperatures that'll really damage your plants. Um, and I have a couple 
that suffered some suffered some burn, but nothing major. Nothing like the year before. <laughs> the year before was crazy. So anyway, we're coming off of an insane year when it came to the weather. And as you know, most of us here in the agriculture business depend a lot on Mother Nature and the weather being kind to us. But I have high hopes this spring is going to come early. We still have the month of February to go yet, which is usually our worst month of the year. Weather-wise, when we scooch through February, we're sailing and we're on our way. So anyway, that's kind of what we're doing here at the nursery. Um, for the last 10 days, I've just been here checking in, uh, watering house plants, of course, feeding our new kitty. And now we're gearing up to take in a whole lot of deliveries uh, and get things ready for the spring. And we start with seeds. And then by the time we hit February, all our fruit trees, flowering trees start to come in because that is the perfect time to start putting trees in the ground. Um, yeah, so I just get excited thinking about it. Anyway, so... What are the trends for 2023? What are some things we can look forward to? And uh, where are you going to see garden centers starting to lean uh, this coming year? Well, it may not come as any big surprise, but pollinator gardens have become hugely popular. And that just ties right in with the cottage garden look, um, creating gardens for cut flowers, so they all just kind of meld together, and uh, we come up with a trend. When we start to see people asking questions and buying more of certain types of plants and uh, pottery and that kind of thing, we call it a trend. And that's supposed to take us right on into 2023. So cottage gardens, pollinator gardens, cutting gardens are going to be super popular um, for color as well as practicality. Another trend we're going to start to see this year is vertical gardening. <laughs> I'm seeing that coming on strong more and more all the time. But for those of you who live in an apartment or a condo or you just plain have a postage stamp yard, people are going up instead of out and starting to plant planter boxes. Um, you see lots of pallet ideas that you can do that with. They're using trellises, hanging baskets. Um, there's so many ways you can do vertical gardening. So we're going to be catering to that more and more all the time. Another trend you're starting to see is no lawns. More and more people are starting to eliminate their lawns. That doesn't break my heart completely. I do like to have a small lawn in my yard because I really like how the green grass shows off all the garden beds. However, I can totally relate when it comes to the watering, the fertilizing, and the constant care that lawns require. So a lot of folks are ripping those out just for the sake of their water bill, if nothing else, and planting meadows or xeriscapes, gardens that can take little to no water during the summertime. And that's right up our alley here in the Northwest because we have similar weather to the Mediterranean where we just get dumped on during the winter time with rain and it's really super dry here during the summer. So Mediterranean gardening, uh, right up my alley. I love lavender and herbs and echinaceas, um, all types of water-wise type plants that you can put into a meadow. Grasses, there's another one. Succulents, <laughs> the list is endless. Uh, but more and more people are going that direction because they're finding out it takes less water, little to no fertilizing, and the only type of maintenance that you're really doing is of course keeping things trimmed back. But look at the benefits. When you're putting in a xeriscape like lavenders, that sort of thing, you're automatically attracting the bees and the butterflies and you know, it just makes sense, it just makes more sense. So another trend that's coming up and has been actually for the last couple of years. So we're gonna go with it <laughs> for a couple of more years or however long it takes. Uh, what else are we noticing? Well, people are noticing the huge spike in food pricing and also supply. So they keep warning us, we're gonna see food shortages this coming year. Um, we may not feel it as badly here in the United States, but they're definitely going to start feeling it elsewhere. Um, due to climate awareness, a lot of farmers are getting pressure put on them to change their behaviors. And that may work for us, it may not. That remains to be seen. Um, but anyway, due to supply chains, inflation, prices are going up on food. So more and more people are coming in 
and picking up seed and vegetable starts, fruit trees, berries, all that kind of thing. And I, that's a category that I just have to keep adding to year after year after year, especially after the pandemic when everybody was home. And I just keep finding that I have to keep adding on to our orders more and more every year uh, to meet the demand. So the demand is definitely there. Um, folks, are, folks are taking it seriously. And that's definitely something I will be covering more of uh, in my videos this coming summer, spring and summer. Um, how to get your beds ready, uh, the best plants to choose for that time of the year. By the way, I will be posting a planting chart on our website at sunnycrestnursery.com. So for those of you who want to start seeds inside, this is a great little chart uh, or a guide as to when to start your seeds, when you will be able to put them outside, um, when to get your starts, when to put those in, potatoes, all of that. So a nice little planting chart. I will be posting that on our website here in the next 24 hours. Give me a moment to get this video done first. <laughs> and I'll have it out there for you. Also, I should probably let you know, if you're new here to the channel, you are more than welcome to go to our website and sign up for our email. I send out a newsletter once or twice a month, cluing you in on new plants, what to do that month, just little tips and tricks in gardening. Um, I try not to make them too long. By all means, leave me a comment if you feel, if you feel I'm just going on too long. Because I just completed our January newsletter and I was like, wow, I had a lot to say. But it is the beginning of the year, so why not? So anyway, feel free to go to our website and sign up for those things. Okay, another ongoing trend that we have noticed are houseplants. Holy cow! We can't keep them in stock, people. <laughs> People want their house plants. Um, what's really neat to see is the younger generations are getting very interested in indoor gardening. And uh, especially here in the Northwest when we're basically locked up for three or four months. Um, we get so dark, cold, and rainy. Um, so what else is there to do? You might as well nurture some indoor plants, right? And a lot of folks are learning how to grow herbs and those kinds of things indoors as well. Microgreens, there's another one folks are learning how to grow. But anyway, houseplants continue to be a trend. Um, here at the nursery, we'll start running a sale on them this, this week. We've got a beautiful shipment coming in to refresh what we already have. Uh, of course, some beautiful new pottery to put them in, baskets, all that kind of thing is extremely popular right now. So houseplants is another trend to keep an eye on for this coming year. Um, gosh, I remember when my mom had this pothos vine that wrapped clear around the edge of the living room back in the day. And then you didn't really hear about houseplants or no one really showed an interest in them. And now all of a sudden they're back with a vengeance. And people are looking for rare varieties, things that are hard to find. Um, so that keeps me challenged. I have to go out there and keep finding all these new and neat varieties like uh, pink princess philodendron which can cost some big bucks mind you the more rare they are the more expensive they'll be but that's what people are looking for it's pretty cool so anyway house plants is another big one uh let's see i have a list here in my pocket let me whip this out real quick that's the nursery building behind me you can see <laughs> There's our shade house, which doesn't have a shade cloth on it right at the moment. And yeah, place kind of looks, see how empty it is down there? We're usually packed. But uh, that just means we did our job very well in seeing to it that most of these plants either got sold or the real tender ones got put under cover, like our greenhouse and the lap house that we have here. So what did I cover so far? Pollinator gardens, house plants, uh, going vertical, veggies, Whoa, here's a big one. A um, <laughs> couple big ones here. Native plants. There's a section that I almost forgot to talk about. <laughs> Gotta do natives. Um, just seems like a natural thing to me to start planting plants that already grow there that already know what the climate is and what the conditions are. They're just so much easier to take care of. They're definitely lower maintenance. So native plants are on the rise. And it's another category that I've had to keep adding to every year. And some folks may think that native plants are boring. <laughs> Not in the least. You gotta make a list. 
and that is something note to self I will put a list of native plants that do very well here in the Northwest on our website give me a moment to do that and list those plants so that you know what you're looking for uh, more and more uh, county permits are requiring native plants to be planted in the yards especially around drainage areas erosion areas they prefer native plants because they know they're gonna take they're gonna stay and they're tough <laughs> once you plant them after that first year getting them established they take very little fertilizer very little care whatsoever unless you're having extreme weather conditions of course but for the most part natives are the way to go and uh, I'm learning to appreciate Salau <laughs> more and more every day uh, because it's an excellent ground cover and uh, when I first moved in I kept yanking it out in places I could not get it under control well after a while you just learn as a gardener that you stop fighting what just wants to be there and work with it and that's what I started to do because I was finding where I was yanking it out was underneath fir trees and sort of thing where conditions are horrible they're dry they get very little water, um, very little attention from me, and come to find out if you're gonna grow there anyway and do really well, then I'm keeping you. And then you learn to use other plants with them. So combining your native plants with other plants to gain that texture and color that you're looking for is, uh, is actually tricky. Um, so I recommend you get with those of us here at the nurseries and we can give you some really good ideas um, on how you can work with native plants in your area. Whether it be dry shade, out in the hot sun, there's a native plant that will make it <laughs> wherever it is you're learning to plant. Okay, so about the only other trend that I have noticed and other garden centers have noticed are uh, people are taking up gardening for health reasons. Uh, let's face it, the last two or three years, all of us as a group have been under a lot of stress. There has been so much going on, you can't, it's just mind boggling how much has been going on. And we're stressed whether we know it or not. So gardening has become a reprieve for a whole lot of people. And there are a lot of people still figuring it out that if you get out in the yard, get your hands dirty and just be in the peace and quiet even for 15 20 minutes you have cut your stress level in half and that just means you're gonna be healthier for it so it's not only the stress and the mental anxiety that gets cut in half but it's also physical and they have proven that if you're out there playing in the dirt it builds your immune system and I have to agree with that because I have not caught a cold <laughs> I have not had the flu even with all of this crud that's been going around for the last three or four years and I am convinced it's the environment that I work in and the fact that I get outside as often as I can and breathe the fresh air and get my hands dirty in the dirt. So health is a real good reason to get outside and start gardening. Okay you guys, um, I don't have any special plants to cover with you today. I'm going to save that for my next video and that will most likely be late winter bloomers like hellebores, uh, forsythia, witch hazel, all those types of plants. Uh, Dawn viburnum, which I absolutely adore. Daphne, uh, gosh, the list is just going. So I'm gonna cover as much as I can in my next video for late winter bloomers. Give you guys some really good ideas as to what you can plant right now. Yes, you can still plant in the month of January. Our soil doesn't freeze here, at least not yet, anyway. Um, so you can get out there and plant. And it's a perfect time to transplant. If you have a tree or a shrub that needs to get moved out in the yard, do it now. They're dormant, a whole lot less stress, and you still got free water coming from Mother Nature. So I encourage you to do that. So for things to do out in the garden, um, clean up. We encourage everyone to keep their perennials up. Uh, let them go to seed so you can feed the birds during the wintertime. Well, folks, it's time to cut them down. Time to cut back all those old perennials, your grasses, uh, clean up the leaves and the debris in your gardens, let the light and the air in, and start prepping for spring. Uh, I encourage you to start mulching. Um, sooner you can get a layer of mulch down before those weeds start coming up, the better. It won't get rid of them completely, but it sure as heck cuts them back so you don't have near as much to do uh, when you're ready to start planting in the spring. Start amending the soil. 
uh, get your raised beds ready, get ready for vegetable gardening, that sort of thing. Um, start cleaning your tools, get your lawnmower ready. It's just time. So if you're sitting there twiddling your thumbs, wondering what to do, that's a start. I have started trimming some things back, especially any dead, diseased, or dying branches, any branches that are crossing over each other. I'm holding off on my fruit trees and my rose bushes, things like that, until February. I like to wait till uh, I see their buds swell, you know, just before the leaves are ready to come on. Then I go out there and start trimming. Be careful what it is you are trimming. Be sure you know when your plants bloom, that sort of thing. Early bloomers like rhodes and azaleas, wait until after they're done blooming before you trim them. Lilacs, that's another one. If you didn't trim your lilac back after it bloomed last year, don't trim it. Wait until it blooms this year and then trim it, or you will have no blooms for at least a year or two if you uh, do it before then. So there's some advice on what you can do for the month of January. Uh, as long as we have days like this where it's not completely pouring rain, there are a lot of things we can get accomplished uh, before the big rush in February and March when things start to get serious. Okay, you guys, it was nice chatting with you. Um, if you would like some more information regarding our channel, you can go to um, sunnycrestnursery.com, our website. You can sign up for our emails as we send out newsletters. Um, of course, get our planting chart so that you know when to plant your seeds. I'm sorry, I'm out in front of the nursery here, so it's a little loud. And, uh, yeah, and of course, if you like this video, by all means, hit the like button. Share it with all of your friends. Uh, I keep hearing from folks more and more all the time. There are no videos for the Northwest, so here I am <laughs> to talk about Northwest plants. Yeah, because we kind of have a unique climate here, right? Um, so yeah, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.